Hello class, good morning. So, sorry for the late uh, video lecture of lesson 1. Nauna na ang lesson 2. Okay? So, in lesson 1, we will have some introduction about numerical solution to CE problems. So, what is the importance of uh, numerical methods to uh, engineering? So first, let's define what is numerical method. So, it is a techniques by which mathematical problems are formulated so that they can be solved with arithmetic operations. Okay. So, it is a technique or a skillful or efficient way of doing or achieving something. So, before the presence of uh, computers, Engineers uh, solve problems using different approach. So one of which is the graphical solutions, which is used to characterize the behavior of systems in the forms of plots or nomographs. So graphical solutions, so mano 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 silang pinaplat sa isang graph. So without the aid of computers, so solutions were not very precise. So hindi siya ganun ka exact or accurate. So one disadvantage of uh, graphical solutions is it is very slow and tedious. So amounts of energy were expended and not very precise. Tama? Yes. Okay, ano, uh, list or ma mahirap magplat mano-mano. Dapat naka-scale pa yung mga graphics mo. Then another is uh, solutions were derived for some problems using analytical or exact methods. So using a simple model, linear solution to complex or non-linear solution. So these solutions were uh, often useful and provided excellent insight into the behavior of some problems. Kaya lang, uh, analytical solution is only limited to some class of problems. So hindi siya para sa lahat. Kasi uh, karamihan sa mga problems are non-linear and involve complex shapes and processes. So, okay lang siya kung ano, uh, linear solution. Another approach is the calculators and slides rules were used to implement numerical methods manually. So, during this time, significant amounts of energy were expended on the solution technique itself rather than on problem definition and interpretation. So, this unfortunate situation exists because so much time and drudgery were required to obtain numerical answers using pre-computer technique. So, ganun kahirap before, nang wala pa yung mga computer. Ang hirap uh, maghanap ng solution using this uh, three different approach. So, yung calculators dati, slide rules, parang uh, abakus pa yun. So, buti lang today, may mga computers na and numerical methods provide an alternative for such. Uh, complicated calculations. So, pati mga calculator natin karon is, ano na, very high-tech. Mag-input na lang yung formula, solve na niya agad-agad. So, although analytical solutions are still extremely valuable, both for problem solve, wait na bala ako. So, although analytical solutions are still uh, extremely valuable for both for problem solving and for providing insight, Numerical methods represent alternatives that greatly enlarge your capabilities to confront and solve problems. Okay, so what are the reasons to study uh, numerical methods? One is extremely powerful problem solving tools. Ibig sabihin ay capable sila na isolve yung mga large uh, system of equations, mga non-linearities -linear and complicated Geometries that are not uncommon in engineering practice and that are often impossible to solve analytically. Yung akala mong ano na wala nang solution pero meron pa pala gamit ang numerical methods. So second is you may use of commercially available prepackaged or kanang canned computer programs that involve numerical methods. So mostly yung mga prepackaged na computer programs ano na part ng ano mga numerical methods it involves numerical methods uh, calculation so number 3 many problems cannot be approached using prepackaged programs pero kung marunong na ka sa ano numerical methods and marunong kang maggawa uh, ng mga programming pwede kang mag-design ng sarili mong pro 
program lalo na kung yung software na ginamit mo is ano uh, hindi niya kayang solve yung specific or details na gusto mong uh, mangyari or solution so ikaw mismo kung marunong ka nang gumawa ng ano gumamit ng numerical methods pero yung gumawa ng mga programs on your own so no need na for you to buy uh, expensive na mga software so another reason is efficient vehicle for learning to use computers how will you uh, uh, or what is the effective way to learn programming in order to learn programming so dapat marunong kang gumawa ng computer programs tama so when you are successfully implement numerical methods on a computer and then apply them to uh, solve uh, other intractable problem so you will be provided with a dramatic demonstration on how computers can serve your professional development and the last it provides to reinforce your understanding of mathematics because uh, isa sa mga function ng numerical methods is to uh, reduce higher mathematics para maging simple or basic arithmetic operations okay so let's have some short mathematical background needed for these uh, subject areas number one we have roots of equations so what is roots of equations I'm sure familiar na mo sa roots of equations ito yung algebra so it has problems concerned with the value of a variable or a parameter that satisfies a single nonlinear equation so an example is solve for the value of f of x when it is equals to zero kanang mga quadratic equations, polynomials, uh, linear, non-linear, mga ganun. I'm sure sa mga calculator nyo, uh, madali na lang to. Input mo na lang yung mga variables nyo, then solve na yung value ng x. Ganun. Sa rest of equation, you are given a uh, equation, then solve mo lang yung mga value ng x. x1, x2, x3, x4, or kung ano mang klase siyang ano, uh, equation. Kung polynomial, ganun. Iba nga meron pang ano, uh, imaginary yung i. So, kasama din yun. Then, we have the systems of linear algebraic equations. So, it is similar in spirit to roots of equations in the sense that they are concerned with values that satisfy the equation. Ito naman, yung you are given a two equations. We have the constant. No? Then, you are tasked to solve the value of x1 and x2. So, yung mga variables, uh, constant, we have the a and c's na mga variables given. Yan yung mga two unknowns, three unknowns, uh, kaya rin ito sa, ano, sa mga computer, ay computer, calculator na isolve. So, napakadali na lang to isolve. Okay, next, we have the optimization. So, problems which involve determining a value or values of an independent variable that correspond to a best or optimal value of a function. So, ito may mga maximum, minimum. So, hindi na siya non-linear na equation. Or maximum, maxima, minima yung mga inahanap na for optimization. Okay, so let's go to next uh, slides. we have the curve pitting. So, your task here is to pit uh, data points to curves which is divided into two general categories, regression and interpolation. Familiar ba kayo sa regression and interpolation? So, regression is employed where there is a significant degree of error associated with the data. So, experimental resu results are often uh, this kind. So, the strategy is to derive a single curve that represents the general trend of the data without necessarily uh, matching any individual point. So, kung bagay ito yung mga points, point ito ay yung mga data. So, sa regression, hindi mo siya i-connect. Kagawa ka lang ng kung baga, trend line, a line lang that represents the data. So, in contrast naman, interpolation is used where the objective is to determine intermediate values between relatively error-free data points. So, so interpolation uh, is to fit the curve directly through the data points and use the curve to predict the intermediate values. So, given ang mga data, i-interconnect mo siya. So, yun yung interpolation.
and it will predict uh, the intermediate values. Nada inarap mo yung dito na points, so ma-predict mo na siya using uh, interpolation methods. So integration, determination of the area under a curve. So I'm sure very expert na mo sa integration. So given ang equation, find the area under the curve. So yun. So, I think madali na lang to sa inyong integration. Tama? It has many applications in engineering practice. So, ranging from the determination of the centroids. So, sa pagkuha sa mga centroids, gamit kayo siya, di ba? Lalo na yung mga irregularly shaped na objects. So, it also play an important role in the solution of differential equations. Then, we have the ordinary differential equations or ODE are of great significance because many physical laws are coached in terms of the rate of change of a quantity rather than the magnitude of the quantity itself. So given the rate of change of y with respect to t, so given the functions ng t and y, so it has to solve for y as a function of t, mga ganun. Or the uh, acceleration of a falling body, so rate of change of velocity, with respect to time, it has two types of problems which are addressed. One is the initial value and boundary value problems. Okay, so dali na naman yung ODE sa lalo na sa dynamics, mechanics, and physics. So naani pa naman yung mga rate of change. Okay, next is partial different equations. It is used to characterize engineering systems where the behavior of a physical quantity is couch in terms of its rate of change with respect to two or more independent variables. So, yung OD is, is simple, parang uh, single derivatives, itong partial different equations is uh, maraming variables na involved. I'm sure uh, each na lang din itong uh, partial different equations sa inyo. So, now let's go to mathematical model. So, mathematical model is defined as a formulation or equation that expresses the essential features of a physical system or process in mathematical terms. So, it can be represented as a functional relationship of the form uh, dependent variable is equal to the functions of independent variables, parameters, and forcing functions. So, it's, we will note this as an equation 1.1. So, it requires ano, ha, understanding of engineering systems. So, by observation, experiment, uh, theoretical analysis, and generalization. So, it's an, ap an application of uh, physics and science to your uh, daily life. So, definition of term, dependent variable is a characteristic that usually reflects the behavior or state of the system. Kung baga, uh, dependent siya, hindi siya makakapag-move kung wala tong isa ka variable. So, lagi siyang ano, dependent sa isa ka variable. Parang ikaw, patay na patay kay jowa, hindi mo buhay kung wala si jowa. So, dependent variable ka kay jowa. So, yun. Daling example. <laughs> so, another is the independent variables are usually dimensions such as time and space along which the system behavior is determined. So, si time is an example of independent variables. So, example, yung jowa mo, binasted ka o nakapag-break sa'yo. Kahit mag-iiyak ka pa dyan, yung time, ganun pa rin. Kahit iniwang ka na niya, tatakbo pa rin ang time at araw, taon. Mabubuhay pa rin yung ex mo maski wala ka. Awit. So, yun yung mga independent variables. Kaya nila mag-survive maski wala yung isang variable. O yung mga solo. Mga nagsosolo sa rank game kahit wala yung mga ka-teammates. They are called independent variables. So, now we have the parameters are reflective of the system's properties or composition. Kung baga, uh, parameters is uh, measurable o may mga units. Parang yung may halaga. Parang bago niyang jowa. May halaga ngayon sa kanya. <laughs> Ouch. And last is the forcing functions, which is an ex external influences acting upon the system. So now, uh, we have to go to some steps for solving uh, engineering Problem. So, we have the following steps. So, it is a flowchart. It can give you uh, some sort of ideas. 
to solve uh, physical problems. Of course, it's problem definition. So, what are the problem itself? So, ano ano mga problema? Yon binig ka ni Jawa. Yon miyak ka bisko problema yon. And syempre, yung physical problems ay yung gagawa naman na mathematical model para mas solve yung problema mo. Then, papasok yung mga theory, mga data. Parang theory mo. May third party si Jawa, si X kaya ka binig yano. Or papasok yon si Chismo sa mga kapit bahay. Yun yung data na siyempre unreliable ngayon gagawa ka ng mathematical model dyan na yung mag stock ka na sa FB susundan mo na si X so after mo na makagawa ng mathematical model so gamit ka ng mga problem solving tools gaya ng computers, statistics, numerical methods, graphics, etc so bahala ka na then of course yung mga tools na yun will give you numeric or graphic results will give you results Give you scheduling, optimization, communication, public interaction, etc. Kung baka sa ibang lab life, gagawin ka na ng closure. And then for implementation, ano na, move on ka na lang. Ganun. So, ganun din yung engineering process. Based siya sa mga physical na problems. Okay. So, example of a mathematical model is a Newton's second law of motion. So, I'm sure most of you familiar with it. Newton's second law Halo sa atong dynamics na subject So it states that the Time rate change of momentum of a body is equal to the resulting force acting on it So we know that uh, Force F is equal to the mass times acceleration Where in F is the net acting force and M is the mass of the object and A is its acceleration so we can recast this format to satisfy uh, equation 1.1 yung pinakauna so katong newton second law of motion so i-recast nato siya sa ganitong format so format sa equation 1.1 so maging ganito na yung tsura niya acceleration is equal to force divided by its mass so in the acceleration is the dependent variable Reflecting the system's behavior, so it is dependent on the uh, mass. For an F is the forcing function, and M is the parameter representing a property of the system. So for this example, there is no independent variable. Why? Because we are not predicting yet how acceleration varies uh, in time or space. So this model has some characteristics that are typical of a mathematical models of the. Uh, physical world. The example number one, it describes a natural process or system in mathematical terms. And two, it represents an idealization and simplification of reality so that its model ignores negligible details of the natural process and focuses on its essential manifestations. And three, it yields a reproducible results. That can be used to predictive purposes. Sample if uh, if you know the force and the mass of the object, so you can compute its acceleration. Because of its simple form, equation 1.2 can be obtained easily. However, other mathematical models of physical phenomena may be much more complex and either cannot be solved exactly or require more sophisticated mathematical techniques than simple algebra for their solution. So we have some example of a mathematical model or complex model. We have a parachutist. So this is the schematic diagram of the forces acting on a falling parachutist. We have the uh, downward force is due to gravity and the upward force which is due to air resistance. So Newton's second law can be used to determine the terminal velocity of a pre-falling body near the earth's surface. So it can be derived by expressing the acceleration as the time rate of change of the velocity with respect to time. So, easy na lang kaya ni sa inyo, no? Since tapos naman nato ni sa dynamics. So, if the net force of the... The net force is positive, what will happen to the object? It will accelerate. Pero kung negative siya, the object will of course decelerate. So, if the net force is equal to zero, so kung mga walang force na nag-act sa kanya, so the the velocity of the object will remain at a constant level. So the net force composed of two opposing forces. We have the downward and the upward forces. So 
this equation 1.5 so f is the net force then downward force is assigned as a uh, positive sign so the second law can be used to formulate the force due to gravity as fd is equals to mass times the gravitational acceleration which is equal to 9.81 meter per second squared force or the drag force is actually and for the upward forces so it assumed that the air resistance is linearly proportional to uh, velocity so and acts in an upward direction Com we can compute for the uh, upward force using the formula so kung positive yung ano natin kanina yung uh, downward force so uh, upward force would be negative or otherwise negative ang um, downward then upward force would be positive okay so we can compute for the upward force using uh, negative c times its velocity where c is a proportionality constant called the drag coefficient which is in kilogram per second so thus the greater the fall velocity the greater the upward force due to a resistance so the ram parameter c accounts for properties of the falling object such as shape shape or surface roughness that affect air resistance or if it is non-linear relationship the upward force can be computed as negative cd and the square of the velocity where cd is called second order drag coefficient and units is in kilogram per meter and the drag coefficient is kilogram per second so please take note of the difference for linear and non-linear relationship so for the parachutist problem so newton's second law acceleration is equal to uh, the net force divided by m so we know that the acceleration is equal to the rate of change of velocity with respect to time Tama. and the net force of the parachute is equal to uh, downward minus the upward force divided by m so we can simplify db over dt ang hirap magsulat we have the downward force downward to a downward ang hirap naman that is mass times its acceleration so ikaw na sa positive so and then upward force of the drag coefficient times its velocity divided by m or simplifying db over dt so cancel na ang m that will become the gravitation acceleration drag coefficient times velocity over its mass so that would be equation 1.9 so it now is a model that relates the acceleration of falling object to the forces acting on it so it's a differential equation because of the rate of change uh, dv over dt however the exact solution for the velocity of the falling parachute cannot be obtained an exact or analytical solution so we cannot solve for the value of the uh, velocity of the parachute so to do the uh, exact solution so we'll be using a calculus to obtain or exact to obtain the exact or analytical solution so if the parachute is initially at rest uh, at rest so its velocity is equal to zero at time it equals to zero so yan yung nandun pa siya sa may aeroplano hindi pa siya tumatalon so calculus can be solved its velocity so applying uh, so integrate ebdt so will give you a value so this equation so using calculus so hindi na ito ipakita ang solution so it's up to you so note that uh, this equation is cast in general form of equation 
So where the uh, vt is equal to the dependent variable and t time is the independent variable, c and m is the parameters, and g is the forcing function. So this is an example of a exact solution or analytical solution wherein we can compute for the value of the uh, velocity, right? So for the initial time, 0. So the velocity is equal to 0. So we know that dv over dt is change in velocity over change in time delta t. Which is equals to acceleration or diba, so dynamics g minus Bayan, ang hirap magsulat. Over M. So, to solve for the value of P at any given time, so we know that the change in P is equal to, so here we will use an interval of every 1 second. So, initial time plus 1. So, that is the interval. So, to use this, we have the uh, velocity of the interval time. Okay, 1 nan minus the initial velocity divided by the time, the interval time. Initial plus interval of 1 is t. minus the initial time which is equals to this g minus c b over m so this velocity is uh, During the time of initial plus its interval of 1 and this velocity is the during the initial time. Okay, so also remember from calculus that uh, dv over dt if we will apply the limit. What? limit of the delta time approaching to zero so it will uh, reverse the process so this is an example of finite divided uh, difference so this velocity is during the initial time so we can rearrange this uh, formula so the velocity during the initial time plus time interval of 1 minus b during the initial time wait masyado yata makapal is equals to we have the g minus drag coefficient times the velocity, initial velocity during the initial time by by m multiplied by the change in time initial plus uh, interval of 1 minus the initial time. And we can transpose the rewriting the formula plus one that is so transpose natin ng initial velocity so making positive na siya pagbalhin sa picas okay plus 
G minus C B that is So using this equation, we can compute for its uh, numerical value. Okay. So if you are given an initial value for velocity at some time t initial, ti, so you can easily compute uh, velocity at a later time, t uh, initial plus 1, so this new value of velocity can in turn be employed to extend the computation if we will change the uh, step or increment at the velocity t initial plus 2 and so on and so forth. So new value is equal to old value plus slope which is uh, time step size. So this approach is formally called Euler's method. So now using uh, exact or analytical uh, equation at a time interval of 2 seconds so we can compute for the value of velocity we have vt is equal to minus e raised to c divided by m times t so mga equation sa exact solution so we have uh We have so we will use the time interval of every one second so ti plus one so we will compute the analytical solution okay Twelve point five divided by six. So the value is equal to zero. But I'm not going to spend twelve seconds. So there you go. So money and value. Was to using the analytical or exact method. Check time t. So the kind of interval is every two seconds example. No? So the time is every one second. So now we'll be using this equation uh, for numerical methods. Let's go back to. Uh, 
So, gamitin natin itong equation. So, that is uh, equals to BTI. So, what is the initial velocity? So, it is 0. Uh, plus G. Plus G nine point eighty one minus drag coefficient of twelve point five divided by its mass sixty eight point one times uh, BTI close parenthesis. So times <coughs> the initial time <coughs> minus <coughs> initial time. <coughs> it's equals to nine point eighty one meter per second. So we will just drag it. Baba. So now we have the values of the analytical solution and the numerical solution. Now we will plot <coughs> plot the data. Okay. Insert chart X Y. So as you can see, we have to uh, from the two different solution. They have uh, some sort of difference, no? So meron siyang mga difference. So that is called an error. So how we will compute for the uh, percentage error or percentage difference? Percentage error or difference, no? So how will you compute this? It's equal to numerical value less the analytical value. Okay. Divided by the analytical value times 100. So that is equal to 9.37% difference. So let's check for the other values. So this uh, percentage difference is decreasing as the time uh, is increasing. So now let's check for the uh, no. let's check this percentage difference using the example on the book. So we will use the time interval of two seconds. So ano mayare? So two. So, ang laki ng percent difference, no? Pero habang tumatagal, lumiliit pa rin yung percentage error. So, sa book, that is an increment of 2 seconds. So, 19.62, 32.39. So, parehas na siya. So, if you will notice, as the time goes by, naging infinite na siya. Lumiliit na yung percentage error, no? Halos nagiging uh, parehas na sila. So let's check kung mabot ng ilang minutes. Okay. So palit na na siya ng palit. Hanggang yung error mo, uh, pagdating ng mga 50 seconds, 0 0.001 na yun. Almost infinity na. Parehas na sila ng value. Numerical and the analytical or exact value 
Pero kalos parehas na sila. So, this value na numerical, analytical, using the time interval of 2 seconds. So, halos parehas na sila dito sa, sa book, no? Check nyo yung sa book or sa presentation ako. So, let's try uh, increment of 0.5 seconds. So, nito po. Mm, 2.5 okay. oh, So, mas maliit Yung increment na ginamit natin Mas maliit yung error No? Okay, let's try another 0.1 Seconds error a point one increment so that's it napakalit na lang ng error so halos magkalapit na silang dalawa kung mas maliit yung uh, incremental step na ginamit natin ok so you notice the error is uh, almost uh, napakalit na percentage so let's go back to the book sample increment 2 so that's our lesson for mathematical models so exact versus the numerical values okay Okay, so mga taan ni Direya. Okay, so here is your assignment number one. So, rather than linear relationship, you may choose to model the upward force on the parachutist as second order relationship. So, using calculus between the closed form position for the case where this jumper is initial at rest and repeat the numerical calculation example 2 with the same initial condition and parameter values but with second order drag, use a value of 0.22 kg per meter for the uh, drag coefficient, second drag coefficient. Okay, so submit this on uh, before October 1. So that's it for today. So see you on next uh, lecture. Goodbye.